Hello, this video will demonstrate how to conduct the fall cone test to determine the liquid limit of a soil. The fall cone method provides results with higher repeatability compared to the Casa Grande method. The test procedure is described in ISO 17892-12-2018 Geotechnical Investigation and Testing Laboratory Testing of Soil Part 12 Determination of Liquid and Plastic Limits The equipment needed for conducting the fall cone test is a fall cone device equipped with a calibrated cone and sample dish, several moisture cans, a squeeze bottle, a porcelain pot bowl for mixing the soil, and a stopwatch capable of reading to the nearest one second if the fall cone device does not have its own timer. Preparation of soil. About 200 grams of soil finer than 0.4 millimeters is required for the determination of the liquid limit by either method. Sieves with an aperture of 0.425 millimeters or an aperture of 0.4 millimeters are acceptable for removing the coarser material. Whenever possible, the test should be carried out on soil from its natural state. Soils should not normally be oven dried before testing, but if this is necessary, it shall be reported. If the sample includes material larger than about 0.4 millimeters, this coarser fraction should be removed. If the fraction larger than 0.4 millimeters consists of a small number of discrete coarse particles, they can be removed by hand. If the coarse fraction cannot be readily removed by hand, the particles shall be removed using the wet separation method. Once you have more than 200 grams of material finer than 0.4 millimeters, remold the soil thoroughly to break down its structure. Add or remove water as necessary to adjust the consistency of the resulting remodeled paste to bring it to the range required for testing. Remolding should be carried out by hand using spatulas to mix the sample on the mixing plate and should be continued until the consistency of the specimen ceases to change. This may take up to 40 minutes. Avoid air bubbles being mixed into the specimen while remolding. If a significant quantity of water needs to be added to the specimen to achieve the desired consistency, Allow the specimen to equilibrate with the water for a minimum of four hours, taking care not to let the specimen dry in air. High plasticity soils may require up to 24 hours. The calibration of the cone must be made. The fall cone apparatus has a vertical adjustment mechanism which allows the cone to be adjusted so that the tip of the cone just touches the surface of the specimen before the cone is released. The fall cone apparatus also has a mechanism for measuring the penetration of the cone into the specimen after it is released. The resolution of the penetration measurement must be 0.1 millimeter or better within the range of 5 millimeters to 20 millimeters if the 60 gram 60 degree cone is used and within the range of 10 millimeters to 30 millimeters if the 80 gram slash 30 degree cone is used. For the test either a 60 gram uh, cone with a 60 degree angle or an 80 gram cone with a 30 degree apex cone angle. 
uh, complying with the requirements of Table 1 can be used. Both cones have been shown to give essentially the same value of the liquid limit. The cone is made of or coated with a corrosion resistant material such as stainless steel or chromium and should have a smooth polished surface. The cone itself needs to be checked that it is in calibration. The surface of the cone should be smooth and the maximum wear of the tip of the cone should be less than 0.3 millimeters. If the cone does not meet these criteria, it should be replaced with a new cone. The sample cup is made of a non-corrodible and rigid material, spherical or cylindrical in shape. If cylindrical, it should have a base parallel to the rim with a diameter of at least 50 millimeters and a depth of at least 25 millimeters. If the 60 gram 60 degree apex cone is used. If the 80 gram 30 degree apex angle cone is used, the depth of the sample cone, sample cup should be at least 40 millimeters. The liquid limit should be determined as soon as possible after remolding. Place a portion of the prepared remolded soil into a clean and dry cup with a spatula, taking care not to trap air. Strike off excess soil with a straight edge to give a smooth level surface. Note that the liquid limit is influenced by any trapped air bubbles when remolding or placing the paste into the cup or by insufficient remolding. Next, lock the penetration cone in the raised position. Lower the supporting assembly so that the tip of the cone just touches the surface of the soil. Once the cone is locked in position, either zero the depth penetration measuring device or record the initial position of the cone shaft to the nearest 0.1 millimeter. Release the penetration cone and let it settle for a period of 5 seconds. Record the depth of penetration of the cone after 5 seconds to the nearest 0.1 millimeter. Calculate the depth of penetration of the cone as the difference between the initial and final position of the cone shaft. Check that the depth of penetration is within the required range for the type of cone used. For the 60 gram, 60 degree apex cone, the acceptable penetration range is from 7 to 15 millimeters. For the 80 gram, 30 degree apex cone, the acceptable penetration range is 15 to 25 millimeters. If the depth of penetration is within the required range, lift the cone out and clean it, being careful to avoid scratching its surface. Add a little more remolded paste to the cup, taking care not to trap air. Level the surface and repeat the fall cone test a second time. The difference between two such successive readings should be less than 0.4 millimeters for the 60 gram cone and less than 0.5 millimeters for the 80 gram cone. If the penetration is outside the required range, repeat the test after changing the water content as needed to adjust the consistency of the remolded soil paste. If the penetration values are within the range shown in Table 3, remove a specimen of minimum mass 15 grams 
of remolded paste from the zone penetrated by the cone and determine its water content. Remove the remaining remolded paste from the cup and add it to the rest of the remolded paste. Adjust the water content by a small amount and thoroughly remix the sample with the spatula to ensure uniform distribution of the water. Repeat the test for this new water content. The test shall be repeated enough times to give at least four test points at different water contents. The four points shall all be within the range specified in Table 3 and with at least one point above and at least one point below the penetration depth corresponding to the liquid limit. The four or more test points should be roughly evenly spaced across the penetration range in Table 3. Plot the measured water contents as the ordinate on a linear scale and the corresponding cone penetration as abscissa on a log 10 scale if using the 60 gram cone. An example plot for the 60 gram cone is shown in the figure. Draw the best straight line fit through the plotted points. If one of the measured water contents differs by more than 5 relative percent in water content from the line, this test point may be omitted from the regression. If the remaining three points do not give a satisfactory linear relationship, the test should be repeated.